Yo, what's up? <clears throat> so, I discovered this guy, Paul Wallace. Um, this cool Australian dude who's just finally a mainstream author who's on board with this whole concept that the obviously the Old Testament God is evil, right? He's been saying that for years. But he's been saying for like five or six years that Yahweh is not only evil and not the same father as Jesus as we've come to, but it's actually reptilian aliens and it's a paleo contact from the past. Now this might seem, whoa, what does that mean? You know, how, how can that be if there's only, you know, 365 Jesus prophecies? Well, that that's the thing. A lot of these prophets were tapping into the real spirit realm, but at the same time, many of these different aliens and entities who wanted to kill, uh, rape, and create slavery and, you know, have gold and virgins for themselves, it wasn't just to some spirit. It was actual physical beings mating with the offspring of mankind so they can have a, a kind of hybrid species, right? And we've gone over this idea how the Elohim created male and female in Genesis 1.27. And all of a sudden, Yahweh in Genesis 2.21 creates Eve. And a lot of people are like, oh, Eve is the first female. That's not what the Bible says. Eve is a secondary offspring from Adam's rib, a.k.a. one of, AKA one of his cells. Okay, so these... The Yahweh was doing some hybridization with mankind, and um, and then things got all out of whack. That's people a lot of a lot of skeptics who want to take the Bible literally say, "Well, how was the earth created before the stars and all this stuff?" Well, perhaps Genesis and in the beginning is referring to the in the, in the beginning of the earth. That's why that one verse that makes no sense. You know, he separated the higher waters from the lower waters. That's never made sense to me. But it does make sense if these um, higher powerful ones, as Elohim is translated, it's plural as we know, it's not the Trinity either, um, it's something else. The powerful ones were separating a water world covered earth and so the land mass could arrive. That's the separating of the higher and the lower waters when they were terraforming and allowed land to bloom and stuff. So anyway, this guy has some awesome books. Um, Conspiracy of Eden, Scars of Eden, you know, this whole series, um, four books. But he's got hours of YouTube material, y'all. And my favorites are just littered with his stuff. And I actually emailed him. This is the guy, real cool guy. We'll watch some of his stuff. Um, and he responded back. And he said, yeah, your channel is good too. You do a lot of hard work and you don't have enough views. And I was like, yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and then I found this woman, Scriptural Truth, scriptural truth did jesus warn us that you always the devil and i watched this three hour thing i watch it on 1.25 speed just to speed it up um but yeah she's got some amazing amazing points too and now i also want to get into um carl monks the code really quick because it's something <clears throat> we need to be reminded about okay and it, it's something that's extremely extremely important um so and it ties in the whole Mars history with everything. So if we take the volume of the Great Pyramid divided by its grid vector, divided by its height, divided by its length, we get 1.01394466969. Now just multiply that by 2 pi squared times 2 pi cubed. You get 9929.184896. Okay, um, well what is that? Well, the position of Mars is 40 degrees, 52 minutes, and 0 0.4773 seconds above the equator of Mars, you just multiply 40 times 52 times 4.773. You get 9929.184896. So the, the pyramid, Cairo in Egypt literally means Mars, right? And we know the face on Mars is something. I'm watching a lot of Billy Carson videos too. Um, amazing, amazing uh, uh, researcher. And you see, you know, here's the the DNM pyramid. You know, it's a five-sided pyramid on Mars. And then the face is just to the right of it up here. And this looks like a whole little city. Of course, it's Cydonia. And we can see how, um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, we see this formula right here. 1 third pi times 2 third pi times pi is 6.8902837061 whatever. And then we see the face on Mars. 
is exactly 6.8902 degrees west of the DNM pyramid, just using pi and square roots and multiplication. Okay, the Cydonia um, DNM pyramid is what Earth's Giza pyramid is to Mars. Okay, this is the set. This is the um, uh, the zero longitude latitude. Okay, or latitude, not Greenwich. England, like we claim, the, uh, the pyramids were originally zero uh, latitude. And just as on Mars, the DNM pyramid is zero latitude. So we get 6.8902, uh, 6 6 and you just get that from one third pi times two third pi times pi. Okay, all these monuments are there to correspond to a correct position. And then if we take that 6.8902, etc., bring it to the ninth power, you get 35,005,310.83, which is precisely the distance of Earth to Mars in miles. Crazy, huh? All right, one more example. You got the Akapana Pyramid on Earth. What do you notice about it? It's got corners and they're all 90 degrees. And that's all you need to know. How many corners? 16. 90 degrees. Okay. Well, we got to put pi in there, so 16 corners times 90 degrees each times pi is 45 to 4523.893421. Well, well, what is that? That's that explains its position. 16 degrees, 33 minutes, 08.5679 seconds is the location north of the equator, and just multiply it again, you get 4523. What else is 4523.893? The face on Mars. If you just multiply its literal latitude position, 41 times 11 times 10.03, you get 4523.89. So the Akapana Pyramid's location just happens to multiply to the exact same figure as the face on Mars. All these monuments are connected. There is a huge reptilian uh, system going on with their, their genius mathematics, you know, this doesn't just have to be humans or God. This is reptilians with hundreds of thousands of years of knowledge. And we're barely skimming the surface of what math could do. All right, we take a look at this pyramid. You see how it's there's kind of a level slope here? Well, that explains. It has nine corners and eight faces. Okay. So, 8 and 9 times 360 is 25,920, which of course is the precession of the equinox. Well, what do you do? Just multiply it. It's position north of the equator. 29 degrees times 47 minutes times 19.018 equals 25,920. So, once again, the shape of the monuments explain its position. I, I, can, I can go all day with this stuff. Um, let's take a look at uh, this pyramid. You see how its edges are rounded? Okay, you see? It's not squared off like most pyramids. Well, what do we do? Square the circle, because it's rounded, but it's still a square. Well, 360 squared, because 360 is a circle. It's one, uh, 129,600, which is the product of its location, 120 degrees, 54 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds south, uh, 20 seconds north of the equator, y'all. I have gone over this before, and I'm going kind of fast, but that's that's because you know we need a reminder of this stuff like hey there's a huge system in the past that we are just totally ignorant to and Kikwilko what does this scream circles okay well just multiply it again 19 degrees times 18 times 1.0526 equals 360 its location represents what it it's its actual figure its mathematical formula represents its location. It's back and forth. Um, of course, we got the Nazca lines. There's eight lines on the left, two in the middle, and five go through on two different triangles. So first, eight divided by five divided by two is 0 0.8. Okay, and what are two triangles? Two 180 degree shapes. So that's 360. 0 0.8 times 360 equals 288. And multiply it by 60, because that's the degrees of the corners, you get 17,280, of course, which represents its location again. 14 degrees, 41 minutes, 
seconds south of the equator on Earth. Then what? Just multiply it by 3, because it's a triangle, to get its longitude of 51,840. 17,280 times 3 is 51,840. The Nazca lines are explained. They're not just alien um, landing pads like Eric von Daniken and uh, other people have theorized. They're actual formulas figured out by Carl Monk implemented by the reptilian forces who are on Mars as well, okay? You look at this strange one. It's got a 90 degree angle, four fingers on one hand, five on the next, two arms, two eyes. Well, 40, 90 times four times five times two is 64,800. No, I'm sorry, it's 16,800. Sorry, I gotta study that one more. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna keep going. Um, you need to watch it. It's a good six hour long video on Carl Monk's The Code. Um, it's weird that Jesus says we'll do greater miracles than him. What could that possibly be? What's greater than walking on water? You know what I mean? Uh, some Billy Carson stuff. I was He was explaining all the evil in the Old Testament. I kept commenting, that's an evil God though. And Jesus was against that which thankfully Mark um, and Paul Wallace goes into. Uh, let's see, let's see. And here we go. <clears throat> let's just skip to my Instagram real quick. Um, okay, of course, the Yahweh is Satan thing. We all know four beasts came from the sea. The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings. Another beast is like a bear, and then another's like a leopard. That's Daniel 7 saying the beast is a lion, uh, a lion, a leopard, and a bear. What does Hosea 13 say the Lord Yahweh is? I'll be into them as a lion, and as a leopard, by the way, will I observe them and meet them as a bear. That's bereaved of her whelps. So the Old Testament says the beast is a lion, a leopard, and a bear. Then Yahweh is the lion, a leopard, and the bear. And then, of course, we know Revelation says the beast once again confirms it is a lion, a leopard, and the bear, okay? And then we have Revelation 13, 16 with the mark of the beast in their right hand and their foreheads. And it's weird how Exodus 13, 16, the same exact verse number, is when Yahweh puts a token upon thine hand and for the frontlets between thine eyes, okay? Yahweh is describing the mark of the beast in the Old Testament um, and stuff. Sorry, there's my little AI art. Still enjoy that sometimes. Now let's watch this guy really quick. The stories of the Bible are not stories about God at all. They are stories about a totally different kind of entity and a plurality of entities. Elohim means powerful ones, the powerful ones. And there are stories of all kinds of powerful beings through the Hebrew scriptures. Now this is what was believed by church fathers like Origen, Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, and the hereticized Marcion. They all believe the Elohim stories were not about God, they're about something else. And so you've got stories of, I believe, extraterrestrials. You've got stories of alien visitors who look and sound human, but they've got advanced tech. You've got stories of entities that sound like dragons, and they all get translated as God stories. And then the holy name Yahweh, the holy name for God in the Jewish tradition, has been pasted over all these stories to make it look like a seamless story of Yahweh from the get-go. But those stories are not Yahweh's stories. And so this then raises the question of how did Jesus read the Elohim stories? How did Jesus read the Yahweh stories? Did he believe Yahweh was God? Did he believe the Elohim were God? Now, Jesus specifically in Matthew 5 calls out Yahweh's laws six times, okay? In John 8, 44, he says to the Jews, your father's of the devil. Um, Jesus even compared him. Um, in, in the book of Numbers, the Lord Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many people of Israel died. Jesus calls that out in Luke 11, 11. He says, if a son shall ask for bread from uh, of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will, he, will for a fish, will he give him a serpent? He's saying... Would you do what Yahweh did in Numbers 21? Because I wouldn't. So why, why is Jesus calling out his own dad if that's supposed to be his dad? These churches are just so scared to bring up anything about the Old Testament. But I'm giving them more hope saying that evil wasn't 
Jesus' perfect Father. As he says in Matthew 5, says, be, there, be therefore perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. A perfect person wouldn't kill innocent people and massacre whole towns and promote slavery. And then we get into the pluralism. Once you know Hebrew, you can prove that this, the words God should be gods with an S. Why is God plural in Genesis, and was it really God or gods, Anunnaki? God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, Genesis 1.26. Okay? And another case where God is plural in the Old Testament, implying it's not the Father of Jesus speaking, Genesis 11.7. Let us go down and confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Who's God talking to? His buddies? You know? It, this is the Tower of Babel, of course. And here we go again. Uh, God is referred to as plural by Jesus, who's rebuking Yahweh as evil. Sorry, my heater's kicking in, and it's raining outside. Dark and stormy night. So Matthew 5, once again, 521. Ye have heard it was said of them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, whoever is angered with his brother without a cause is more in danger of the judgment. Okay? It, it well, is also in danger of the judgment. Why didn't he say, my dad said back in the day, don't kill, but I'm saying, you know, don't be angry at anyone without a cause. He's saying, he didn't say that, he didn't even say it in singular. He said, you've heard it was said of them of old times. These reptilian beings who, who came down to Moses in the burning bush, with fire coming out of his nose, and or smoke coming out of his nostrils, and fire comes out of his mouth. The same Leviathan beast in Yob is the same Yahweh beast in Psalm 18.8. Fire out of his mouth, smoke coming out of his nose. Why would God have dragon-like features? Just like in Revelation, he's a dragon. Okay? The reptilians. And not just one, mind you, because it's over thousands of years. These are multiple different reptilians persecuting and killing the Jews and using them for hybridization, war, plunder, spoils, booty, all that stuff. <laughs> booty and booty, <laughs> you know, the, the the spoils and the women. Okay, here's just a small list of uh, what Yahweh did in the Old Testament. And zoom in on that. Supported human sacrifice, created evil, um, ordered men to become drunken in Jeremiah 25, 27. Uh, he's often jealous, like Deuteronomy 5 and 9. Just, just it's just all evil and so Christians are so scared and they tiptoe around the Old Testament saying well that's all the law that was his dad but Jesus is nicer so I'm going to worship Jesus what did Jesus say? he said to the Jews you never knew me and you never knew the father and your father's of the devil and he was a murderer from the start that doesn't sound like he's speaking kindly of his father Jesus was literally here to remind us of the reptilian invasion that is basically all of the Old Testament, okay? It's crazy. And if we want to get controversial, the so-called virgin birth, scientists can't get behind that. Well, can you get behind this, scientists? The aliens made him and put a cell into Mary. Say, yeah, we need someone who can finally preach truth because these evil aliens have been ruling this whole time. These evil reptilians, and then maybe there's some benevolent, kind aliens uh, on the next door. Um, but there's still evil ones who've been ruling everyone this whole time. And I even commented, said, Yahweh are the reptilians who ruled over mankind thousands of years ago. Hence the cold-blooded nature of their deeds and neutrality regarding human death and suffering. And Jose, you know, the lion, the leopard, and the bear, and all that stuff. Yeah, that I've been saying for years, as well as Nainanya. Um, here, let's listen to this guy some more. We now have a set of scriptures teaching Yahwism. There's only one God, and his name is Yahweh. And it's that edit of those stories that got glued onto the apostolic writings. The problem with gluing them together is that it sends the signal that this God, whom we call Yahweh, is the same God whom Jesus worshipped and taught about. And it's simply not the case. Nope. Though Yahweh came to be used as the holy name for God, originally it referred to this colonizing entity, this experience of colonization and brutalization by other non-human powers. And the problem is, if you confuse those things, 
If you confuse God with a dragon, if you confuse God with a colonizer, if you confuse God with a violent, genocidal, jealous, ET entity that has no empathy towards its humans, you end up with a very distorted vision, not only of God, but of yourself. If you worship a God who divides the human race into my people and not my people, you will have to think in that same racist kind of way. You worship a xenophobe, you will become a xenophobe. You worship violence, you will justify violence. And indeed we have. Through the ages, we've justified invasions, colonizations, enslavements, misogyny, all kinds of violence and injustice in the name of a violent God. And my books, The Eden Conspiracy, Escaping from Eden, The Scars of Eden, Echoes of Eden, argue that the time is more than due for us to unravel this connection. To be sure that when we use the word God, we're speaking only of the source of the cosmos and everything in it, that in which we all live and move and have our being, of which we are all offspring, which is a beautiful, inclusive vision in the words of the Apostle Paul in Acts 17, and that we do not consider the Yahweh figure of the Hebrew stories as God. It is something else. And in the Eden Conspiracy, I go into the root meanings of key words to show that Yahweh is just one of a number of non-human demographics with whom our ancestors had to deal in the deep past. We have Yahweh, El Shaddai, El Elyon, all the Elohim, the El Ba'adab, the Tzeva Hashemayim. They are stories of paleo contact, not of Almighty God, which turns out to be an invented translation altogether. That's it. That's that's a hundred percent it. Um, so he's kind of evolved my awareness of, yeah, Yahweh is Satan, but what's Satan? A bunch of reptilians doing evil, secretly, you know, invading mankind. They're already here. They're on the moon. Um, who knows what's on the dark side of the moon except the astronauts who are there and don't like to talk about it. Um, so Satan is some kind of weird reptilian energy that all these rep that that these beings are tapping into, and Jesus was literally here to call them out. And Christians are like oh, aliens. I don't know about that. What does Genesis say? The Nephilim, which means in Hebrew, from the stars came. The Nephilim is literally aliens who mated with men, the men's mankind's women, and created giants. And you don't want to believe in alien conspiracies, even though it's right there, buddy. So anyway, that's kind of what I've been um, digging in. Like this whole week, I've just been devouring this guy's YouTube videos. Super glad he emailed me back. Um, hopefully, you know, I'm getting his books on Amazon. Some are cheaper on Kindle, but I do want to, you know, own them. Because, um, like, th these are books I want to have and to hold. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I guess I'll end it on something a little lighthearted. Black metal, you know, I'm a fan of dark music, but it doesn't mean I agree with your um, ideologies. Um, so black metal, the God of the Old Testament is evil, so why believe it? You got all these metalheads, you know, calling out the Bible, saying it's dumb, why believe such an evil God? But then they say worship Satan and be evil, and then at five minutes later. So which one is it? If you're a true black metal person, and our theory is correct, then you worship the God of the Old Testament. Good for you. Go rape and pillage and slaughter innocent towns in the name of some alien. Uh, you know, Ezekiel's wheels within wheels and UFOs every five seconds. These so-called angels that look like men and, you know, helping people out randomly. Th these, are, these are physical beings and they're not all just hallucination, visions, prophecies. It's a historical account more than it is just a spiritual account. Okay, and that's kind of what I'm just trying to say. And I'm keep on saying it. Um, I got more time. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. It's just um, this is this is the time of the awakening, and this is the time where we can um, figure this stuff out. Okay. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Jesus says, "Who, who gives a serpent to someone when they ask for food?" He's literally calling out a scene from what. Yahweh, Elohim, whatever did in the past. And that's that. And <clears throat> I hope we can all um, wake up together and realize it's okay to believe the Old Testament because it's describing the historical accounts 
of evil aliens, okay? Not all aliens are nice. We think, oh, if they're advanced, they're not evil. Says who? Just like Paul says, it's probably like Star Trek, where there's some, there's some good aliens and there's some evil Klingon aliens or Romulans, but there is a prime directive to, for both of them to say, well, if they can't do light travel yet, we promise not to invade them. But they showed their little UFOs at Roswell, 1947, the exact year the Nag Hammadi Gnostic scriptures come out, talking about a lot of different things that most of these Christians aren't uh, on board with. So anyway, um, I just want to say that this guy, is, is, he came at the exact perfect, perfect moment in my life um, to confirm this stuff and to, <clears throat> you know, to, to confirm my studies, but take it to the next level. Yeah, Yahweh, Satan, but what is it literally? A bunch of reptilians taking over the universe, or who already have taken over the universe and is waiting um, to colonize Earth again, okay? The flood and all that, when they came on the moon, because the moon is a hollow spaceship, they came on the moon, caused the tides, and then the flood happened. And then the first, the book of Genesis 1-1, when them separating the higher waters from the lower waters is when they terraformed Earth. It's not the beginning of the universe, Big Bang, 16 or 13 billion years ago, whatever it is. It's the beginning of Earth, okay? And the Anunnaki Sumerian tablets are much older than the uh, Old Testament. And it clearly says there's a bunch of aliens um, coming down from space and colonizing, and they're giants, and they took humans as slaves and altered humans to make them do work, and probably slaves on Mars, you know, it's like, it's just a huge conspiracy, and um, it's now's the time to wake up, y'all. Uh, okay, I'll end it now, I promise, on some awesome uh, Billy Carson Mars images. That looks like a spaceship. That looks like, you know, not natural. It looks like a, a, a sarcophagus. There's some faces right here. This is all on Mars. Um, all these structures... This looks like a face of some kind. It's the eyes, nose, and the mouth. Um, this is straight lines again. Just like Prometheus says, God, in the movie Prometheus, God doesn't work in straight lines. There's a mind looking head. Um, there's a tool, looks like. There's a spaceship, looks like. I don't know what that is. It looks like a guy, or a sculpture at least. Like there's civilizations on Mars, y'all. Probably still right now, of course. If they're on the moon, they're on Mars. You know, who cares? They're probably underground. I mean, we got ice on the the South Pole or the North Pole of Mars. And you see the true color of Mars is more bluish than red, like we're told. And there's another face on Mars I didn't even know about. It looks like some kind of Pharaoh King with the helmet. Anyway, this Billy Carson, super awesome. He has a book called... Uh, Cyclopedia to the Emerald Tablets. It goes into a lot of fun stuff. And, okay, I think I'm finally done now. I'll take it easy. And I don't want to say think for yourself because at this point it's just uh, smoking gun after smoking gun. It's going to change your perception once you know. And um, the, you can't not know it. So think for yourself, but you know, get with the program. If you still don't think anything I say is real, then you're not thinking for yourself. You're just blindly um, following the program because you're comfy. Well, you can teach your kids Santa Claus exists. Um, I'm going to teach them Jesus is uh, the anti-reptilian uh, soldier, you know, or whatever it is, because he's full of love, but he's still calling you out, okay? Um, gentle firmness, as they say. And of course, the Nazis built UFOs. Hitler was obsessed with the UFO phenomenon, the occult. And um, we know Hitler wasn't blonde hair, blue eyed, but that's what he wanted, which is kind of weird. Well, that's because he believes that there are aliens in Antarctica who are blonde hair, blue eyed, and really tall giants. He thought that was the ideal because the aliens apparently had that stuff. Who knows if they're smart, or not smart, who knows if they're good or bad, even if they're smart. That's my thing. Just because you're a mathematical genius and you can create spaceships don't mean you're nice okay that's what we have to get past well if it's advanced they would be nice not evil says who says who you know what i mean um okay i think i'm good now take it easy